morning to everyone. Uh, we do bless the name of the Lord today. We thank him for uh, just being so good to us. We thank him for another day in the land of the living. Another uh, blessed privilege that he has given us uh, to give him uh, praise and worship. We're grateful to God for his saving grace and his keeping power. We thank him so much for all that uh, he is to us. We bless his name. And we're just, we're just so grateful this morning that God has uh, smiled on us and has allowed us uh, again another opportunity to come and to give him the praise that's due unto his name. Uh, we thank you all so much for tuning in this morning uh, for our online uh, live streaming service on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And we're grateful to God for uh, this platform and we thank God for each of you who have tuned in this morning. Uh, we're just uh, thanking God that we still have an opportunity to worship Him even in this online setting. Uh, it's just, it's a good thing to be able to praise the Lord. Amen. I said it's a good thing to be able to give praise unto the Lord. So we thank God for you. And, uh, you know, given the situation with uh, the coronavirus uh, cases going up and so forth, but we have chosen to continue to do our services uh, online. And so uh, tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Uh, you know, let them join in with us and let us have a high time in the Lord. Is that all right? All right, let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord. We ask that you would uh, look on us this morning, oh God. We ask that you would uh, send your help to us in a mighty way. Lord, we just want to give you thanks and we just want to give you praise because, Lord, we realize that if it had not been for you, Lord, who was on our side, we don't know where we would be this morning. But we're so grateful, God, that you have smiled on us. We thank you, Lord, oh God, for just watching over us even through the night and through the storm. We thank you, oh God, for allowing us to rise up to see this day, Lord. Another day, Lord God, that wasn't promised to us, but you have been merciful and you have been kind. And so, Lord, we ask now that you would help us today. Oh, God, let everything that is done in this service today, let it be to your praise and to your glory. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you would look on us. That you would bless them, oh God, through this online service. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so very much all that you are to us. We thank you for the anointing of God. But we know that it's the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage. Look on the sick this morning and those, Lord God, that are in the hospitals. Touch them, oh God, and heal them and raise them up, oh God. Do it to your praise and to your honor. And Lord, we'll give you praise and we'll give you thanks. Lord, remember now those that are discouraged Lift them up, oh God. Those that are with bowed down heads, lift their heads, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those that are grieving this morning because of a loss, God, we ask that you would embrace them now with your everlasting love. And we pray, oh God, that you would send comfort and strength to them right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help us today and we'll give you praise and we'll give you thanks. For you are worthy king, and we just give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. At this time, we're going to uh, call for Deacon Lane to come with a, a scripture reading for us this morning. We're just so grateful to God uh, for this opportunity and this privilege that he has given us to praise his name once again. How many know that he's worthy of praise out there? I said he's worthy of praise. You may not be in the house of the Lord, and you may be in your living room, and you may be in your kitchen to give praise unto the Lord. So we thank God for you. At this time, let us receive the Lane as he comes with our scripture reading for today, and after which, 
the House of Prayer number two Apostolic Church praise team will come and lead us in our praise and worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Deacon Lane. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. Our scripture reading for today will be coming from the book of Psalms, the 119th Psalm. Amen. Amen. Spent a little time in that Psalm over the weekend. Hallelujah. We're going to be reading from verses 105 through 112. Verses 105 through 112. Amen. And the word of God reads as such. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according unto thy word. Accept, I beseech thee, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me thy judgments. My soul is continually in my hand, yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statue always, even until the end. May the whole Lord have a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his precious word. In Jesus' name. His word, hallelujah, the word of God, hallelujah. Anybody excited about the word of God? Yeah. Hallelujah. When we look at the word of God, we find so many descriptions of who he is that we can have a personal experience with. Hallelujah. He's a healer, he's a redeemer, he's a deliverer, he's a strong power, he is the shade upon my right hand, he is my shield, hallelujah. He is everything that I Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord
Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you for the move of your spirit. We thank you for the Holy Ghost being in charge. And Lord, we ask today that you would look on us now, that you would speak to our hearts. My God, my God, look on this, your servant now. Shake these lips of clay, Lord, that we might utter words of thy pleasing, that your people may be strengthened, that your name might be exalted. Help us today, Lord. Remember again the sick, oh God, touch them, heal them, raise them up because you are the healer of the body. Speak to us today, Lord. Send us what we need, oh God. Send it right from the portals of glory. We shall glorify you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I want to speak to you just for a little bit from the subject, victorious in spite of circumstances. And I want you to remember this morning that ideal circumstances do not guarantee victory. And an overcoming lifestyle, a lot of times we're looking to overcome in life, and we're looking for that victory. But it does not come because of ideal circumstances. Faith in God brings victory in every situation. Now, we read in your hearing from Romans chapter number 8, and when I look at verses 38 and 39, one of the things that struck me in verse 38 was the words that Paul said, I am persuaded. Then you read on down to verse 39, and then you see the words, nothing shall separate us. From the love of God. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. In Genesis 50 and 20, I was going to read that, and we still may. But you find the words, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. A lot of the things that we face in our life and in our walk with God, the enemy meant it for our evil. But God meant it for good. In John chapter number 16 in the New Testament, verse number 33, Jesus said, in the world ye shall have Tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Look at what we face as a child of God. Not a life of ease. Life, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, life is a struggle. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse number 12, it says, The kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Life is a race. Paul, writing to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 9 and 24, he says, all are in a race. Only one receives the prize. Life is a war. Paul writes, 
writing to his young son in the gospel of Timothy. In 1 Timothy 1 and 18. He tells him, he said, war, a good warfare. Somebody's probably thinking, well, what's a good warfare? What was he meaning by war, a good warfare? He was really telling Timothy that warring a good warfare is by faith and a good conscience. Something that every child of God needs to avoid is the if only syndrome. You want to avoid that. The if only syndrome. If only I had more money, I would be happy. If only I did not have to work with the kind of people that I have to work with, I could be victorious. However, whimsical desires to remove opposing circumstances does not lead to victorious Christian living. Let's be clear about that. But learning to trust the all-sufficient grace of God will lead to victory. Let me read something in your hearing because I, I really want us to get this message today. I want to go to I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I'm going to read this in your hearing. And verse number 9. Paul writes, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. <laughs> Ideal circumstances, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, are not the answer. Paradise, utopia, Camelot, these are places in man's dreams which promise a tranquil and carefree environment for their inhabitants. Is such an environment crucial to our success? Must we have a place with no problems, I ask you? Here is what's important. We are given many occasions in the Bible which nullify the very notion that a life of victory is dependent upon ideal circumstances. Think about this. How about Lucifer? That was Satan's name before his fall from heaven. You might even say before he was booted out of heaven. You find that reference in Isaiah chapter number 14 and verses 12 through 17. But I want you to know something that Lucifer had the ability 
to create beautiful music. And you find that reference in Ezekiel 28 and 13. He lived, get this, in heaven. Did you hear what I said? I said he lived in heaven. But despite all this, Lucifer was tempted to rebellion. His position did not keep him from temptation. Notice, pride sometimes arises when a person's circumstances are close to ideal. We began to think that we have, that what we have is through the labor of our own hands or that we deserve it, we are then on a fast train, as the Germans would call, they call the fast train the S-Bahn. We are then on a fast train to destruction. I think it is important to remember that the Lord is our source. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. The Bible also says pride go it before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It goes on to say, better it is to be a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Listen to me now. Pride in accomplishments, talents, steel, they lead us away from dependency on God. Did you get that? Because then we can get so lifted up and so prideful that we'll start saying, well, I don't need God. I can do this on my own. But the last time I looked in the book, it says it's in him that we live and move and have our being. So don't you dare for once think that because of your, your gift, your skill set, uh, 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 your talent that he has endowed you with, that it puts you in such a lofty position that now you don't even think that you need God, or you think you don't need God. In Proverbs 30 and verses 8 and 9, you know, we talked about Lucifer, but here's another one for you. I, I, you know, I wanted to read, uh, Lord have mercy, let, let me go there anyway. Y'all bear with me. I want to read in your hearing, uh, Proverbs 30 and verses 8 and 9. I really want to read that because I, I want you to get this today. Lord have mercy. Let me see. Where am I? Okay, here we go. Proverbs 30 and verses 8 and 9. Yeah, there we go. All right. Proverbs 30, verses 8 and 9, it says, Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or 
or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. We talked about Lucifer, Lucifer, but here's another one for you. How about Adam? How about Adam? Just think about this for a moment. Adam was in paradise. Adam had everything. I said he had everything. Adam was given food in abundance, according to Genesis 2 and 16. Adam was given authority. According to Genesis 2 and 15, there was only one thing. Somebody say one thing. one thing. There was only one thing that was withheld from Adam, and that's what he wanted. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a problem with ideal circumstances is what a man always wants. He always wants that single thing which is forbidden. It becomes the object of attraction. And affection. Can I say it like that? Notice. How about King Ahab? Remember him? Huh? He desired to have Nabal's vineyard. Remember that story? Though he owned every other vineyard around, he just had to have Nabal's vineyard. For some, I want y'all to listen to me this morning. For some, enough is never enough. And if you don't get much out of this today, I'm here to tell you that pride will mess you up. Yes, it will. Pride will cause you to lose the right perspective. And if you're not careful, you will begin to ride with the ideal circumstances. And when the ideal circumstances are not there, you fall to pieces. But listen to me, y'all. He was unable to enjoy what he had because of what he did not have. You understand what I'm saying? Even in life today, children who are given many earthly possessions are not given the love and affection they need. So they seek disaffection through sin, promiscuous ways, drugs, unbridled passions, etc. So the abundance of good things are forgotten in the search for that which they were deprived of. Do you see that? Uh, I wonder do you, do you have your ears on this morning because listen to me now. Let me just give you another one. 
Here's another one for you. How about Judas? Remember him? He was among the twelve. Judas was the treasurer for the disciples. Find that in John 12 and 29. Judas used his position to steal money from the treasury. John 12 and 6. Good reference. While the other disciples grew in the knowledge and power of God, Judas became more devious. Can I talk about this for a minute? Think about it. When Mary anointed the feet of Jesus, it was Judas who objected because of the cost of the alabaster ointment. You find that in John 12, verses 5 and 6. And here's a pastoral note that I just want to leave with you. Uh, Judas's reasoning was not motivated by care for the poor, but his greed for money. Money will also mess you up if you allow it. This particular story that I'm giving you has a very sad ending. Judas lost his apostleship, lost his life, and his hope for eternal life. Acts 1 and 25 is a good reference to that if you care to search it out. I just stopped by here this morning just for a few minutes to let somebody know that you can have victory in difficult circumstances. Lord knows uh, we have got a lot on our plate here over the past eight or nine months. This has been a challenge for many, even the Christians. I want to say this to you today because as we were talking about Judas, I wanted you to know that even when making financial decisions concerning the church, don't let your decision be based upon uh, an unwillingness to give more money to the work of God. This, this, this situation with Judas had a very sad ending because he lost out in the end. Now I want to take you to the Old Testament for a moment, and uh, and that is Joseph. I want to talk about Joseph for a moment. Joseph had a dream. There was jealousy in the heart of his own brothers toward him. You know the story. Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children. Huh? I'll tell you what. Let, let's, let's go there. Let, let's go to Genesis chapter number 50. I've been trying to get there all day, it seemed like. <laughs> uh, Genesis chapter number 50. And I want us to look at verse number 20. Uh, I, and I did think I, I think I mentioned part of this as well. But it says... But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Listen to me now. Joseph 
Joseph was loved by his father. More so than all the other children. Because Joseph, and here's what his father did. His father Israel made him a coat of many colors, right? Why did he do that? Because he loved Joseph. And he loved Joseph more than the others because Joseph was the son of his old age. Is that right? And so, listen to me now. I want you to remember that though all things work together for good to them that love God, that's what the Roman writer tells us. Joseph was sold by his brothers. Remember I told you that, that there was a lot of jealousy in their hearts uh, uh, toward Joseph. Joseph's brothers, they sold him. He became a servant in Potiphar's house. And you know the story there, Potiphar's wife lied on Joseph. Joseph ended up being placed in prison until the Pharaoh needed someone to interpret his dream. And one of his servants remembered that when he was in prison, that Joseph interpreted his dream and the dream of another one. And here we find that ultimately Joseph becomes a ruler in Egypt. Joseph, I want you to listen to this. Joseph accepted the difficulties as part of his dream coming to pass. His attitude through it all was, that he would be safe. But not only Joseph, because the Bible tells us that uh, it saved much people alive. How about John the Baptist? On the Isle of Patmos. Bible tells us on the Lord's day, John was in the spirit. And in spite of his circumstances and his environment, John was in the spirit. Some people can't get in the spirit unless the music or the song, or the message is just right. I submit to you this morning that we may not have ideal circumstances, but here is what we need to have. We need to have an attitude of the conqueror. Amen. Yes, 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 my brothers and sisters, there is an attitude of faith which stems from trust in the love of God. Well, uh, somebody said our attitude uh, determines our altitude. Uh, You've got to learn how uh, to look beyond your circumstances uh, and see the end of it. Uh, in Acts chapter 16 and verse 25, uh, uh, yes, uh, we find Paul and Silas uh, locked up in prison. Uh, but the Bible said that at midnight, uh, uh, Paul and Silas prayed uh, and sang praises unto God uh, and the prisoners heard them. Uh, this is the attitude uh, that you 
survival. Uh, if you can learn to pray and sing praises uh, while trying to survive uh, the dungeon of depressing troubles, uh, you will surely know uh, the victory of the Lord. Uh, well, uh, uh, to do this, uh, you must be able to see beyond uh, the moment. Uh, most of us say that uh, we believe God uh, is going to see us through. Uh, well, uh, uh, yes, if you know uh, the end, uh, that everything will turn out okay, uh, then why worry uh, in the midst of uh, your circumstances? Uh, put your trust uh, in the master uh, of every circumstance uh, and know uh, that this too uh, shall pass. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I found out uh, that the thing to do uh, when you don't have ideal circumstances uh, is to pray uh, and trust God. Uh, no matter what it looks like, uh, no matter what it feels like, uh, and I, if you trust him, uh, if you lean on him, uh, if you just stand uh, and just believe God, uh, he'll make everything all right. Uh, how many believe that out there today? Uh, well, uh, in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, verses 7, 8, and 9. Uh, uh, I read something of interest uh, concerning a problem uh, that Paul had, uh, that Paul was dealing with. Uh, uh, Lord. Uh, and here is what Paul said. Uh, he said, unless I uh, should be exalted above measure, uh, through the abundance of the revelations uh, there was given to me uh, a thorn in my flesh uh, the messenger of Satan uh, to buffet me uh, lest I should be exalted uh, above measure uh, for this thing uh, he said I besought the Lord thrice uh, that if it might depart from me. Uh, he said unto me, uh, my grace uh, is sufficient for thee, uh, for my strength is made perfect uh, in weakness. Uh, most gladly, therefore, uh, will I rather glory in my infirmity uh, that the power of Christ uh, may rest upon me. Uh, listen to me. Uh, the real me uh, oftentimes uh, is not the elimination of the circumstance, uh, but the grace to endure it. Uh, yes, uh, in Romans 8 and 18, uh, he said, For I reckon uh, that the sufferings of this present time uh, are not worthy uh, to be compared. Uh, to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Uh, we can joyfully uh, endure suffering uh, in the present uh, because of the glorious future uh, that is promised to us. Uh, somebody ought to shout yes. Uh, we need to ask ourselves this morning uh, do our circumstances uh, do they make us bitter uh, or better uh, oh lord uh, I gotta go now uh, uh, but when I consider uh, the epistle to the Philippian church uh, Paul said uh, I am persuaded uh, we must be persuaded this morning uh, before the trial ever comes uh, before the circumstances ever show up uh, we must be persuaded uh, then we don't have to worry uh, about making up our minds uh, our mind uh, is already made up uh, oh yes uh, we must not despise uh, the chess 
chastening of the Lord. Uh, uh, because sometimes uh, we see the uh, uh, Lord. Uh, we see the things that we're going through. Uh, we see it as the Lord chastising us. Uh, and, and, and because we see it that way, uh, we see it as God's judgment uh, 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 on us. Uh, but I stop by uh, just to tell somebody this morning uh, that it's not uh, even the chastening of the Lord. Uh, it's not God's judgment on you. Uh, it is a signal of his everlasting love. Uh, uh, yes, uh, you and I don't get to pick and choose uh, what our tests will be, uh, what our trials will be. Uh, we don't get to pick and choose uh, what we'll go through in life. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that the God uh, of heaven and earth, uh, he's got everything uh, worked out. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I said he's got everything worked out. Uh, don't you dare uh, think that the Lord's chastening of you uh, uh, is a bad thing. Uh, I want you to know this morning uh, that even if the Lord chastens us, uh, it is a sign uh, of sonship. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, that is proof of sonship. Uh, that's what the Hebrew writer tells us uh, in Hebrews 12. Uh, well, uh, this uh, that we are facing, uh, even as a nation now, uh, this pandemic uh, that seems to be on the forefront uh, of everyone's mind. Uh, uh, I just want you to know this morning uh, that everything uh, that the enemy uh, has meant for your evil, uh, God. Uh, God meant it for your good. I said God meant it for your good. Uh, oh yes. Uh, we can be victorious uh, in spite of our circumstances. Uh, this uh, that we're facing right now. Uh, don't let it move you. Uh, I heard uh, the Bible say uh, this too uh, shall pass. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, this that we're facing uh, is not going to move us uh, because the Roman writer uh, helped us out. Uh, he said, for all things uh, work together for good uh, to them that love God. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, look for the good. Uh, look for God's hand. Uh, look for better. Ha, somebody out there say better ha, You gotta look for better ha, I told you about Joseph ha, Joseph could have given up ha, But he trusted in the Lord ha, Put your trust ha, in the Lord ha, Wait on him ha, And again I say wait ha, Trust the Lord ha, When your circumstances ha, are on a downward turn uh, trust in uh, uh, when your circumstances uh, seem to be out of control. Uh, trust in uh, when it looks like uh, the very odds are against you. Uh, trust in, uh, trust in, uh, trust in, uh, lead on him. Uh, he will hold you up uh, when you're falling down. Uh, just remember, uh, victory is yours uh, in spite of uh, your circumstances. Uh, stand uh, in victory. Uh, walk uh, in victory. Uh, shout uh, in victory. Uh, sing a song uh, of victory. Uh, stand victorious. Uh, the Bible says. righteousness uh, and your feet shall uh, 
preaching of the gospel of peace. Walk victorious. I heard the Bible say, walk in love. Walk as children of the light. Walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time. Because the days are evil. Yes. And you also have got to talk victorious. Yes. The time has come now for the saints of God to stand up and open their mouths and testify to the glory of God. The psalmist said, I'll make known his deeds among the people. Yes, I heard the Lord say, He said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who be and redeemed from the hand of the enemy? Talk, talk victorious. Tell somebody that Jesus is your God. Tell somebody that the Lord is a God of salvation. And one last thing before I go. Stay victorious. We are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Victorious in spite of circumstances. Yes, your circumstances does not define who you are. You are a child of God. You are a child of the King. You are victorious, beloved. Know this. If you don't know anything else, Know that in spite of your circumstances, you are victorious. Well, maybe there's somebody out there today who don't know the Lord in the pardon of your sins. But this is an opportunity that you have to give your life to him. Maybe you don't understand about how to walk in victory, how to talk in victory, how to sing in victory. Maybe you don't know how to stand and stay victorious, but it's in Jesus. He has given us the victory. We have the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, we have the victory. Through his shed blood on Calvary's hill. Yes, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's somebody out there today who don't know the Lord. This is an opportunity for you to surrender your life to him. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe. There's somebody out there who have been close to God. You have walked with him. You have already tasted of the heavenly gift. But somewhere along the way, you lost your way. You got off track. You fell by the wayside. But this is an opportunity for you to get it together. An opportunity for you to ignore your circumstances and surrender your life to God right now. Today is a day 
we're victorious in spite of our circumstances. And if you believe that today, right where you are, throw up your hands toward heaven and just say, Lord, I thank you for the victory. Lord, I thank you for the victory over my circumstances. Lord, I thank you for just making a way out of no way. Lord, I thank you for keeping the doors of employment open to me. I thank you, Lord, for your great provisions, uh, for how you have given uh, to us so freely all good things to enjoy. Lord, I thank you, and I praise your name. Come on, come on. With your hands lifted up, come and thank you. With your hands lifted up, uh, just give him a shout of praise. Uh, with your hands lifted up right there you are, uh, in your living room, in your family room, uh, at your kitchen table, uh, throw up your hands toward the heaven and just tell the Lord, uh, Lord, I love you. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry uh, that I fell by the wayside. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry uh, that I lost my faith. Uh, I'm sorry uh, that I lost my interest uh, in the things of God. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, just who you are, uh, but I thank you, Lord, uh, for the blessed privilege uh, of allowing me to come today and to stand before you right where I am and to surrender my life to you because you are God. You are the God of our victory. You are the God that causes us to navigate around and through our circumstances in life. And for that, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, beloved. In spite of your circumstances you are victorious let us pray Father we love you this morning we thank you for all of your goodness toward us we thank you that you have given us the blessed privilege again to be able to look to you You are that present help in trouble. You are that strong tower. You are our defense. So Lord, we look to you now. I ask right now, Lord, that you would undergird those that are weakened. You promised in your word, Lord, that you would supply every according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Supply the strength that they need right now. Give them the presence of mind to rise up from their circumstances and begin to live for you and to serve you. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew as well as the Greek. So no matter who you are, no matter what your background is, no matter where you came from, God stands ready to help you. Lord, we thank you. For just being that source of help. That source of strength for us. Lord, keep your hand upon your people. Keep their hearts encouraged. Keep them ever with the mind to serve you. 
in the beauty of holiness. Lord, there may be someone that just, they want to serve you, they want to love you, they just can't see to get it together. But God, I'm asking that you would look on that one right now. That you would encourage them. That you would build them up, God, where they may be torn down. That you would give them the presence of mind to, to know that you care. And that they can put their trust completely and entirely in you. Do it right now, Lord. Save today, Lord. Deliver today. Heal today, Lord. Strengthen today, Lord. Encourage today, Lord. This your people. And we'll glorify you. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all the people say, Amen. And Amen. God bless your heart, beloved. Thank you so much for your attentiveness. We thank God for your prayers. Thank God for even our guests that have tuned in this morning. We appreciate you so very much for tuning in and being with us in our online service here on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. We ask right now, Lord, that you would help us. How many know the Lord will help us? The psalmist said, and that right early. So we, we just say to you to be encouraged, each and every one. And also, not only encourage yourself, but encourage someone else in the Lord. Let them know that they can make it. Let them know that this is not the end of the road. Let them know that the Lord is there to help them and he will see them through. They may not have ideal circumstances, but as long as they have you, that's all that matters. Clap your hands and give God praise right now. God bless your hearts. Thank you again so much for tuning in. I was trying to get to the end of that, but it was just pressing on me to just to just realize how good God has been to us. We appreciate you all so much. And these online services would not be what they are without you. So we appreciate you every Sunday morning tuning in. Uh, we thank God for the people of God uh, who have been so faithful in their giving, uh, who have given faithfully on our two giving platforms, Givelify.com and PayPal. Uh, we thank God for you. And if there's someone today that's even our guest and you would like to uh, make a donation toward our ministry today, uh, you may do so by going to givelify.com and you can search for House of Prayer number two Apostolic Church and you can uh, give there on Givelify or you can go to our church website at houseofprayer2.com and you can search for uh, contributions or, uh, or donations and you can give using our other giving platform PayPal. Uh, we thank God for you. We appreciate you all so very much. Appreciate your faithfulness and uh, let me just say on Friday night we had a testimony service and prayer and it was an awesome time. I don't know about anybody else but my soul rejoiced uh, in that service and 
just being able to see the faces of a house of prayer number two saints and uh, let us not be selfish let, let us uh, invite someone else the next time we do it and uh, let them know amen that listen you may lose a lot of things but as long as you don't lose your joy amen. you can still make it amen. am I right about it amen. God bless you so much we thank God for you appreciate you. Don't forget on Wednesday night at 7.30, uh, we will, we had some te technical difficulties last week, and we've been dealing with that on and off over the last several weeks, but we're trusting God that he'll work it out, and that we'll be able to be in Bible class online, Facebook Live. Uh, uh, we'll be live streaming uh, at 7.30. And don't forget, next Sunday morning, should the Lord tarry, we'll be right back here with our online services streaming live uh, live on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. God bless you. Uh, it's our prayer for you. Continue to pray one for another. Continue to encourage one another. Even as much as you see the day approaching. God bless you. And may heaven's face smile upon you. Until next time.